The main idea in Robert Greene's The Laws of Human Nature is that all of humanity is subject to specific laws of human nature. Human beings each hold within themselves specific strengths and weaknesses, which they need to learn to manage in themselves, and in others, to act and react in the best way possible. This requires, first and foremost, for people to understand their true nature in its entirety, as well as each aspect of their personality, intentions, and actions. People need to look inward at what motivates them, what brings out the worst and the best in them. There are times when the shadows of our past, when the walls we put up to protect ourselves are the reasons we keep failing at every endeavor we attempt. Learning to take a step back, to become objective, and to use our disadvantages to our advantage brings us not only peace but ways to gain the successes we never thought possible. Our childhoods can cast shadows on our present. Over time we accumulate feelings and attitudes about ourselves and society that can be detrimental. We place our ideas and project our insecurities onto others and their motives for interacting with us. If we lead with a negative defensive attitude that others are out to get us and make life difficult for us then it ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy. We push people away and they in turn stop caring about our success and become what we thought they would. We never realize that it was our own behaviors that pushed people to behave in those manners. Once again, finding some objectivity giving ourselves and others space to be human without harsh judgment and malignment will garner freedom. This freedom is the freedom to change our circumstances by changing our attitude and transforming our perspective. Having a realistically positive attitude, expecting the best out of a situation instantly improves our odds of success. People are naturally defensive to break down people's walls you need to minimize your own grandeur and emphasize others' accomplishments. Mirroring others' values, ideas, and opinions validate them. This validation creates a connection where mutual respect and the desire to empower one another develops. It's through these types of connections that we rise to the positions we desire the most. From a young age, we learn to be guarded to protect our minds and hearts from painful perspectives, criticisms, and judgment. Validating others' opinions and desires gently dissolve their defenses and encourage them to feel safe. This feeling of safety allows people to place their trust in you and fosters a symbiotic relationship. Gender roles can overdefine who we are as individuals. Beyond gender, we create masks to wear in society to blend in. Rarely are we our authentic selves. The rare occasion that we are our true selves tends to come when we are infatuated with another person. On the flip side, while love may bring out your raw person it can blind you to seeing the true person you are dating. Being able to be fluid in your nature, embracing your feminine and masculine sides, pushing yourself to slow down when you want to race ahead, and to persevere when you want to quit will help you distance yourself from the rigid role you have adopted. We are all irrational beings, and the first step in mastering our emotions is to understand where our irrationality lies. We may believe ourselves independent of our emotions and think we are completely rational human beings, but this is impossible. The only way to control emotions is to understand them and how they affect our actions. Emotions affect our decisions and thought processes through the pleasure principle, in which we instinctively look to avoid pain and seek pleasure. Thinking you aren't driven by biases is the perfect example of this principle. Acceptance of the emotions and biases that drive us to behave the way we do when we act out irrationally will bring us closer to being more rational human beings. Negative reactions and overreactions come from high-grade emotions that are triggered by outside factors. Whether those triggers are rooted in early childhood, caused by other people, or high stress levels, understanding them will help us gain control over these reactions. Once we've done that, we can set up strategies to help bring out our rational selves. Each one of us has narcissistic tendencies. At times, we become so self-absorbed that we struggle to see the outside world, the needs and perspectives of others, and the effects our actions can have on the people in our lives. On the other hand, each one of us has empathy. This is what allows us to operate in society. We feel for others, attempt to understand others, their motives, their perspectives, and their actions, and, most importantly, think about how our actions affect others. To combat our narcissistic tendencies, we must focus on growing our empathy and investing time, effort, and emotional energy into training ourselves to be more empathetic. Empathy, rather than self-love or narcissism, will bring about better relationships with those around us and help us understand the society in which we live. Seeing through people's masks is centered around the law of role-playing. People tend to put on a show for others. They play a character they feel will be liked by others and society as a whole. Everyone does it, even though some may believe they are above this. We try to put forward an air of honesty, authenticity, and trustworthiness, but this is not necessarily who we are. Not everyone can be their true selves in every situation and at all times. We amalgamate ourselves to fit in with the people we are surrounded by. And therefore, the same must be said about others. You must learn to read the silent language that takes place in the twitch of an eye or the way a person walks. Body language will often tell you more about a person than their words. By understanding what people are saying with their bodies, by truly observing them, you can see through the masks they wear in public. Determining the strength of people's character is centered around the law of compulsive behavior. People need to be aware of the patterns and compulsive behavior of others. 
You cannot understand people by only listening to what they say about themselves and their lives, paying attention to what others have to say about them, or judging your interactions with them on a superficial level. To determine the strength of people's characters, you need to look out for patterns and specific behaviors that repeat themselves. People are generally repeating offenders and don't often act out of character. Instead, they repress certain character traits in public, but they slip up and this is when you need to take notice. A person's true character will become obvious to you once you have taken notice of their negative patterns. We all have these and they will tell you more about a person's character than what they present to you daily. Becoming an elusive object of desire is centered around the law of covetousness. What this means, in its simplest form, is that by not giving someone all of you all at once, you become someone who is desired. If you give too much of yourself, all of who you are, including your desires, knowledge, and every thought, you will be too easy of a person to obtain. There is a necessary balance between what you choose to give and who you are. By being completely truthful, open, and honest about every flaw, strength, and quality you possess, you are giving the world too much of you. For people to desire you as a brand, they need to want more from you. If you give them everything the first time you meet them, they won't need anything more from you. Confronting your dark side is centered on the law of repression. Every one of us has a dark side and we must come to accept this as fact. Not a single person is without a shadow self, a part of themselves that is not pleasing to others. This dark side may even go against the moral compass of the person in question. But this does not mean it does not exist. Many people see their dark side as something to repress and hide away from the world. This is never a good idea. By repressing your dark side, you are suppressing a part of yourself that by nature wants to come out and it will. The more you repress your dark side, the more those negative traits will build up, and eventually, your shadow will show in the most obtrusive ways. Instead, get to know your dark side. Understand the strengths and weaknesses that come with that dark side and find a way to use those negative traits to your advantage. Your ego can harm you in more ways than you could imagine. Many people don't understand that the motivation behind the ego is envy. Envy can damage a relationship, whether platonic or romantic. You want what the other person has and it makes you feel as if you are lacking. People who don't control their envy often act out in a way that becomes obvious. It is important to recognize people who excessively envy you as toxic and you must not become toxic through feeding your ego. Egotistical people will eventually repel those people who they envy, and those who envy others may act out because of it. We have to be wary as humans to not be drawn in by dramatics. As animals, we tend to react to what we see and hear in our immediate environment. To curb this reactive tendency we need to have a broader view of life and look to long-term perspectives. To acquire the wisdom of looking to the future and foreseeing the consequences there are several steps to take. First, become objective, don't let your emotions overrule your intelligence. Then play the scenario out to imagine both negative and positive consequences. Then make a rational decision. It's not in our nature to know our own limits. Most people have an overinflated sense of self they feel they are the best in their area and that leads to a sense of entitlement. People believe that since they are the best people should automatically take their opinions as law and do their bidding without question. However, our overinflated sense of self often leads to us repulsing the people around us. Most people who are successful and continue to experience success do so because of hard work, humility, a lucky break, and a team of people working with him, her. Staying humble and remembering the people that have helped to get you where are is the key to lasting success and continued prosperity. To the world, we typically present a face that is collected and certain of our place in life. Inside we rarely feel sure of ourselves. This is because we are fickle creatures with many interests and skills and emotions. The combination of these attributes leads us to internal chaos which prevents us from achieving lasting success, direction, and happiness. The trick is to find a higher purpose. Find something that you have the skills for that also drives you to be better and do better and contribute more every day. Humans are entitled and fickle creatures. We inherently go from wanting what we don't have to languish over what we have to deal with. When we are in positions of power we expect that people should trust us and value us and work for us without regard because we are in charge. However, when we are viewing our leaders we are quick to judge and abandon our admiration for our leaders at the slightest sign of weakness in them. Oftentimes we think that we are certain in our affections and dislikes and the truth is that we are ambivalent in our emotions and are constantly changing our opinions in small or major degrees. In order to control this fickleness, we must learn to be empathetic. If we understand how the people around us feel, then we can lead with our constituents in mind and we can follow our leaders with trust. Understanding that relationships with others are dynamic and constantly in motion allows us to accept that our emotions fluctuate and to become objective and evaluate our needs rationally. People function in society while wearing a facade over who they truly are. They are either a sophisticated aggressor or a passive aggressor. Passive aggressors have short fuses and tend to have irrational outbursts at the smallest infractions. Most people have a hard time seeing themselves as being aggressive. We justify and rationalize why we suddenly become so assertive in a situation never realizing that there were subtle clues that we were becoming aggressive all along. Once again, objectivity can make an enormous impact on how we respond to our own aggression. 
aggression in and of itself is a positive attribute. All humans have aggressive tendencies and when used appropriately and controlled aggression leaders to positive assertiveness that moves mountains and creates positive change. We get so used to life, culture, and institutions being the same. When slow changes eventually cause revolutions, people tend to panic and cling to their generational paradigms. These changes seem sudden and coming because they were growing within the mindsets of the generation. Each generation changes culture some adding slowly to another's coming change some creating a revolution. Being able to look to the past, experience the present, and analyze patterns to forecast the future creates a sense of calm and lessens the need to cling to your generational norm. Death is an uncomfortable thought for most people. The greater our fear of death, the more anxious we are in situations where separation and isolation occur. This also causes us to try to fill our lives with distractions to keep our minds off the inevitable end. People try to find comfort in creating gods and afterlives. But science and a general disconnection from religion have caused many to realize that death exists and we don't know what comes next. Then we focus on the loss our loved ones will experience, which is yet another way of us avoiding our fear of death. However, if we embrace that our mortality is an act of life and our life can end at any time, it gives us a different quality of life. Being envious, being dramatic, having a dark side, these are all qualities that humans prefer to ignore or pretend not to have. However, just because they are viewed as negative attributes doesn't mean that they cannot serve a purpose. At the very least you can learn to channel these less than appealing characteristics into beneficial actions or learn to change them completely. It's not easy to decide who we are or what we want to be in life. Sometimes we think we know what we want, only to be pulled in a different direction. Other times we have no idea what direction we should even go in. To not have direction, to be fickle in our desires, these are qualities that cause humans great stress. But with knowledge and commitment to shifting our mentality, knowing our limits and what we can truly commit to, we can become more certain, find a higher purpose, and direct our lives in positive ways that benefit not only ourselves but society. People have an assortment of facets to their personality. This is created not only by their own human nature and experiences but by the environments that they move in. Who we are at home when our peers are not judging us is a different version of the professional we present in our work environment. Learning to pay attention to people's mannerisms and nuances lends us to find the truth of who our peers are. It also helps us to better understand who we are as individuals and how the roles we play impact the successes or failures in our lives. It's also not advisable to reveal our true selves and all our many facets at once. Keeping people intrigued gives us an edge. It also gives us an opportunity to discover which facet of our personality best suits the environment we find ourselves in. It's easy to get angry and completely natural. Aggression actually has a positive component when it motivates us to assert ourselves in an appropriate manner to make a change. We see the positive spin when generations assert their new trends and start social revolutions. Keeping in mind that life is short, that mortality waits for us all can fine-tune our aggression to benefit our lives, and keep us open-minded as to why one age group of people behaves in the manners that they do and what we can learn from them.